2.2 Trigonometric Functions of Non-Acute Angles A reference angle for an angle theta is the positive acute angle made by the terminal side of an angle theta and the x-axis. All non-quadrantal angles that are larger than 90 degrees can be associated with a reference angle. The reference angle is always found with reference to the x-axis, not the y-axis. So we have been talking about angles with our special angles, our 30, 60, um, 90, 45, 45, 90 triangles. Um, if you watched my hand trick video, then you found, you saw that there's a very easy way to find those angle measures. Well, if we have an angle that is not one of those types of angles, sometimes we can relate it to one of those angles by finding its reference angle. So that definition that I just read out to you, what that means is, well, of course, if it's in the first quadrant, then it's going to be an acute angle. So it won't have a different angle that is its reference angle. But if it's in the second quadrant, its reference angle is going to be the acute angle with the x-axis. So say, for example, if we had an angle, if this was 120 degrees, its reference angle would be 60 degrees because it's the acute angle that's made with the x-axis. If we're in the third quadrant, we're just going to back up and it's whatever this angle measure is to get our terminal side back up to the x-axis. And if it's in the fourth quadrant, again, it's the acute angle that's formed with the x-axis. In this example, we're to draw each angle in standard position to find its reference angle. So if we were going to draw an angle that's 150 degrees, first of all, let me draw, and you'll have to excuse my crooked lines, say that this is 0, 90, 180 degrees, well, a 50-degree angle, let me change the colors here. A 50-degree angle, of course, this is the initial side of our angle. And then the terminal side, this is a, um, 90 degrees, so 150 degrees would be somewhere in here. but we want to know what the reference angle would be. So the reference angle would be this angle that gets us back to the x-axis. So the reference angle would be 30 degrees. For 210 degrees, Again, this is 180 degrees, um, so 210 degrees, this is 270, so 210 would be in this third quadrant. Let's say that it's about right here. Um, so all the way to this would be 210 degrees, but just this measure, our acute angle, would be our reference angle. And to get back to this x-axis, we would have to back up 30 degrees to get to 180. All right, then for 330 degrees, what quadrant would that be in? That would be over here in quadrant 4. All the way around here would be 330 degrees. We know if we went all the way around, that's 360. So the difference between 330 and 360 to get back to that x-axis would also be 30 degrees. To find a reference angle without drawing a diagram, you can use these rules. Like I said, in the first quadrant, we don't need to subtract it from anything. Um, of course, that would be an acute angle if we have the terminal side in the first quadrant. 
In the second quadrant, we would just do 180 degrees minus whatever the angle is. Like I said, if it's 120, then it would be 180 minus 120, so that would be 60. If it is between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, then we would just take the angle and subtract 180 from it. If it's in the fourth quadrant, we would subtract that measure from 360, just like the one um, that we just did. It was 330 degrees, so 360 minus 330 would be 30 degrees. So let's find the reference angles for each of these without drawing it out. All right, so if we have an angle that's 240 degrees, we know that that's in the third quadrant. So we would just subtract 180 degrees from it. And we would get an angle of 60 degrees. For 315, that would be in the fourth quadrant. So we would subtract 315 from 360. And we would get 45 degrees. Okay, negative 210, that, remember, whenever our angle is negative, then we would be traveling um, clockwise. So this would be negative 180, and this would be negative 210. So to find that reference angle, I know we're not supposed to be drawing it out, but if you think about it, Negative 210 would be in this quadrant, and we're just trying to get back to the x-axis. So if we have negative 210 and we add 180 degrees, then that would give us a negative 30 degrees, but we the definition of a reference angle is that it's a positive acute angle, so we would just change that to 30 degrees. All we're trying to figure out is how far that angle is from the x-axis. So it's if it's 210 degrees, it would be 30 degrees from the x-axis. Now for the 1,250 degrees, first we need to get down into the unit circle. So we would just start subtracting um, 360 degrees from uh, 1,250 until we got down into the unit circle. So we would have to subtract 360 three times. 360 times 3 would be 1,080. And that would get us down to 170. So now that's something we can deal with. All right, so 170 degrees would be in the second quadrant. So we would just subtract 170 from 180 and we would get a reference angle of 10 degrees. The steps for finding trigonometric function values for any non-quadrantal angle is to first find the reference angle and then use your special angles to get the trig values. We can use our hand trick and we would need to apply the all students take calculus to figure out the signs of each trig function. All right, so to find the exact values of each angle using a reference angle, first for the sine of 150 degrees, remember we're always trying to get to that x-axis, so it's closest to 180. So the, the reference angle would be 30 degrees. Now we can use our hand trick to find the sine of 30 degrees. So we would put down our pointer finger and the sine of 30 degrees would be one half. Now we just need to figure out if it's if it has the correct sign. So 150 degrees is in the second quadrant. Just to remind you about the all students take calculus. Remember all students take calculus. So that tells us which trig functions are positive in those quadrants. All of them are positive in the first quadrant, sine in the second quadrant, tangent in the third quadrant, and cosine in the fourth quadrant. So if we um, 
we're in the second quadrant, and here we're dealing with sine, so we know that sine is, in fact, positive in the second quadrant. So it would just be one-half would be the value of the sine of 150 degrees. For the cosine of 315 degrees, that's in the fourth quadrant, is closest to 360, so we would just subtract 315 from 360, and that would give us 45 degrees. Again, if we use our hand trick and we put down our middle finger, remember the cosine is the number of fingers to the right, the square root of the number of fingers to the right over 2. So it would be the square root of 2 over 2. Now we're in the fourth quadrant. All students take calculus, so cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. So the cosine of 315 degrees would be square root of 2 over 2. The tangent of negative 120 degrees. All right, so negative 120 degrees, that would be, we're going clockwise, so that would be here in the third quadrant. Um, and the reference angles, if we're at negative 120 to get to negative 180, that would be a negative 60 degrees. So we're just, the reference angle would be 60 degrees. It's 60 degrees to get to the x-axis. For the tangent of 60 degrees, if we put down our ring finger, it's the square root of the left over the square root of the number of fingers to the right, which would just be the square root of three. All right, so we're in that third quadrant. All students take. Tangent is positive in the third quadrant. And then for the cosine of 570 degrees, first let's get it down in our unit circle. So we're going to subtract 360, and that would give us 210 degrees. All right, so um, that would be in the third quadrant. And we would need to subtract 180 from 210, so that would give us 30 degrees for our reference angle. Well, the cosine of 30 degrees, if we put down our pointer finger, cosine is the square root of the right over 2. And then we are in 570 degrees. Um, let's see. So all the way around is 360, plus we would go another 210 degrees. So we are in the third quadrant, and that would give us uh, negative because cosine is negative in the third quadrant. All right, now we're going to use function values of special angles to evaluate these equations, these expressions. Okay, so we have to find the values of each of these first and then um, simplify to find the value of these expressions. For the cosine of 150 degrees, that's closest to 180, so the difference between 150 and 180 would be 30 degrees. Now the sine of 30 degrees, we use our hand trick, would be 1 half. Plus, let's see, plus 2 times the cosine of 315 degrees squared. Okay, the cosine of 315 degrees. The difference between 315 and 360, we're trying to get back up to that x-axis, would be 45 degrees. All right, so 45 degrees, or the cosine of 45 degrees squared. This is the sine of 30 degrees. All right, the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of 2 over 2. Minus the tangent... of negative 120. All right, so negative 120, we already figured out, was the square root of 3 for tangent because it's square root of 3 over the square root of 1, and that uh, would be squared. Okay, so, oh, I'm not putting that there. I'm supposed to be putting that in the, sec in the next. This is square root of 3 squared. All right, so the reference angle for that is going to be 30 degrees. Not 30, 60 degrees. Sorry. Oop. 
Okay, and the tangent of 60 degrees is the square root of 3, and that is in the third quadrant, so the tangent is positive. All right, so now let's square these. We've got to follow order of operations. So if I square the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 2 squared would just be 2, and then 2 squared is 4 minus the square root of 3 squared would be 3. All right, so if I multiply 2 times 2 over 4, that would be 4 over 4, which is 1 minus 3. All right, so 1 minus 3, that's a negative 2 and a positive 1 half, so that would be a negative 1 and 1 half. All right, let's do the same thing with B. First, we gotta figure out what the reference angles are, then the values of those reference angles, and then solve um, for the expression. So the sine of 60 degrees, that is just, that is already an acute angle, so we don't need to find a reference angle. But the sine of 60 degrees would be the square root of three over two. The cosine of 150 degrees, that's in the second quadrant. We want to find um, the reference angle to get to 180 degrees. That's 30 more degrees. So it's the cosine of 30 degrees, which would be the square root of 3 over 2, only it's in the second quadrant, so it would be negative square root of 3 over 2 minus the tangent of negative 45 degrees. All right, so the tangent of 45 degrees, that would be the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which is 1. Um, but we are in the fourth quadrant, and tangent is negative in the fourth quadrant. So that would be negative 1. This tangent of negative 45 degrees is negative 1. Okay, so if we multiply these together, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 would be 3. It's a positive times a negative, so it's negative. And 2 times 2 is 4 minus a negative one, so that would be plus one. And if I add those together, um, of course, I could change this to four over four. That's the same thing as one. So that would give me a positive one-fourth for my answer.